have chocolate ice cream with the cake today? Thank you. Hi, my name's Crispin, and my family is so cool because we're all fire-breathing dragons. My mom is, my dad is, and today I turn seven, which means I get to breathe fire too. I am so excited. Crispin sent along his friends and family as a big cake was brought up to the table. Who will light the candles? asked his mom. I will, I will. So I opened my mouth and I huffed and I puffed. Whipped cream. When I was in first grade, math was so hard. I could easily do two plus two, but when I got to 13 plus 15, I had no idea what to do. But what I really wanted to do in math class was pull out my notebook and just write. But my math teacher didn't admire my creative writing skills. The only thing she cared about was my math skills. Every day we are judged on what we can't do, but not what we can do. Just like Crispin the Dragon, he was judged so harshly on the fact that he couldn't breathe fire. But in the end, he does something much better. And not your typical dragon by Dan Burrow. But the next day, Crispin was excited. It was a brand new day. Maybe yesterday was just a fluke. So he quickly put on his clothes, ate breakfast super fast, and ran all the way to his first fire breathing practice. And I saw all my friends setting logs on fire. And then it was my turn. Yesterday was just a bad day. All dragons have to breathe fire. So I opened my mouth and I huffed and I puffed. Marshmallows. Crispin, dragons breathe fire, shouted his coach. <sighs> Maybe I'm not a real dragon after all. And since he thought his family and friends would be disappointed in him, Crispin ran away from home. Shoo. <sighs> I'll be better off without a dragon who can't breathe fire. And so Crispin started walking and walking and walking and walking and walking until he found a little cave that would be his home. He started to get sailed in there when he heard footsteps outside the cave. So he peeked out and saw the knight standing there. I am Sir George. Show yourself, dragon. Do your worst, dragon. And so I hopped outside the cave and I opened my mouth and I hopped and I popped. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Fire, dragon. I thought all dragons breathe fire. I don't know. It even says here in my book that your typical dragon breathes fire. I guess I'm not your typical dragon. But wait, maybe I have an idea. What about your book? Maybe it says something that could fix me. Of course. Let's see. The two tried every idea in Sir George's book, but instead of fire coming out of Crispin's mouth, Beach balls and golf balls and basketballs and pencils and even a dinosaur came out of his mouth. It's no use. I'm never going to breathe fire. But I miss my parents and I'm ready to go home. I don't care if they're going to be disappointed in me. I am who I am and that should be enough. Okay, little dragon, I'll take you home. And so the two started on their long journey back to Christmas home. Once they arrived, his parents were very relieved and didn't care that he still couldn't breathe fire. But just then, Sir George's father showed up. There you are, boy. Why on earth are you playing with a fire-breathing dragon? He's my friend, father. And besides, he doesn't breathe fire. A dragon that doesn't breathe fire? That's the silliest thing that I've ever heard of. And then Crispin's father got very angry. My son is not silly. He may not breathe fire, but I certainly do. And Crispin's father let out a powerful spray of flames. He, he couldn't stop breathing fire. Dragons came running from different directions. They knew how to start fires, but not how to stop them. And then I felt a tingling in my tummy. So I opened my mouth and I yapped and I buffed. Water! Crispin aimed the water at his father's limbs until they disappeared. He saved the house, the neighborhood, and even Sir George's father. 
Everyone shouted, hooray for Crispin! Everyone deserves a chance to shine in their own way.